Hello and welcome to this short video which will introduce you to the Netbox web interface. I am logged into the public demo instance of Netbox which is freely available to use at demo.netbox.dev. Once logged in you are presented with a menu system on the left hand side of the screen. Starting at the top you can see that under the first section Netbox is tracking the objects that make up the organisation and this can include objects like the regions and sites that the network devices are physically located at along with the racks that devices are installed in. This also includes tenant information, so you can define which customers or departments you have, plus all the contact information for your organisation. Moving down the menu, you have devices. Netbox uses device types to represent unique real-world device models. This allows a user to define a device type and all its components once and easily replicate an unlimited number of device instances from it. With the devices data model and the other data models in Netbox, there are dependencies and devices always have to have a manufacturer and a device type. So if I click on manufacturers, then Cisco, for example, you can see the device types set up for Cisco in this demo instance. And then we can drill down further, for example, into the C9248P device type. And there are a number of instances of this particular device type. The device type is essentially a template that models the device and you can see this device type has a template for the standard interfaces including 48 gigabit ethernet ports, a management interface and stacking ports. Once component templates have been created, every new device that you create as an instance of this device type will automatically be assigned each of the components listed here. So if we go back to the device type and instances and click on the name of the first instance of this device type, we can take a look at the details we have stored for it. For example, the region, the site and the rack. Over on the right hand side in the management panel, we can see that the device role is an access switch. And if we had a primary IPv4 or v6 IP address configured, they would also be visible here. Click on the interfaces tab to see details of all the configured interfaces on the device. As this device has some defined cables and connections to other devices already, we can even bring up a visual of the cable trace for interface Gigabit Ethernet 101, which connects directly to a router in the same communications closet. Worth pointing out here is that while users are always free to create their own device types in Netbox, many find it convenient to draw from our community library of predefined device types. This is possible because a particular make and model of device is applicable universally and never changes. These are freely available on GitHub in the Netbox community project, and you can find the link in the course page for this video. In a later module, you'll learn how to import some device types using this community library. The devices menu section is also where you can define all the other possible features that a device might have, ranging from the platform it's running on, for example, Cisco iOS, through to physical components such as interfaces, console ports, and module bays. Moving down the menu again, you have the connections section, which define all the physical connections in your network. For example, in cables, we can click on the first cable in the list and see that the cable is a yellow single mode fiber cable that connects from a level three circuit to the interface on our router at DM Stanford site. Also notice the blue upload symbol next to the cables. Whenever you see this, you can do a bulk import of objects into the database, either by adding the CSV data manually or uploading a CSV file with the options section telling you which are the required fields. Next, we have interface connections, which tells you which interfaces on which devices are connected to other interfaces and on which ports. You can also model wireless links, console and power connections. The wireless section is used to model all of your wireless networks. And if we click on add, you can see that we can track all the data related to your SSIDs, including what VLAN is used which site the network is linked to, which tenants, and also the authentication settings used, including the pre-shared key. The next big section is IPAM. And as you would expect, there are a lot of object types that can be stored in here for your v4 and v6 IP addressing. Remember that Netbox is designed to be the authoritative network source of truth for the ideal state of your network. So in IPAM, as with all the data in Netbox, this tells you how things should be or how you intend the state of your network to be. As IP addressing is hierarchical, in Netbox you can model everything starting from the highest level of the regional internet registries like ARIN through RFC 1918 private address space and further down into aggregates and then through to prefixes 
IP ranges, and right down to individual IP addresses. At the level of the IP address, you can track a whole range of information relating to the IP address itself, such as the DNS name, the interface assignment, and also any network address translation that you have in place. This just scratches the surface of the IPAM section of the database, but we'll return to it in later modules of this course. Next up, we have a great example of how new features are being added into Netbox all the time. Added to Netbox in version 3.3.0, was the ability to model your L2 VPN and overlay networks such as VXLAN and eVPN. They can be defined in Netbox and tied to interfaces and VLANs. This allows for easy tracking of overlay assets and their relationships with underlay resources. Each L2 VPN instance has a type and optional unique identifier. Like VRFs, L2 VPNs can also have import and export root targets assigned to them. Terminations can then be created to assign VLANs and or device and virtual machine interfaces to the overlay. Under virtualization, Netbox can model your virtual machines, starting with defining your cluster types such as VMware and other well-known cloud platforms, then creating your clusters and then adding your actual VMs, where you can define all the data that you can with a network device such as interfaces and device role. But you can also define things like resources such as CPU and memory. Circuits is where you store all the information relating to your providers and circuits. How many times as a network engineer do we struggle to find the contact information to raise a support ticket with a provider when the circuit goes down at a DC or remote site? Well, those days are over as Netbox stores all the relevant information and makes it incredibly easy to find. Another great feature of Netbox is the ability to track your power feeds and power panels Again, as with all the data stored in Netbox, it is super easy to track and find exactly the data you need with the intuitive user interface. So the last section of the left-hand menu bar under the heading of Other is where you can find a whole host of other incredibly useful information and features, such as logging to tell you who updated the IP range recently, for example, through to custom fields that allow you to extend the data model to suit your own environment, and custom links to external applications. You can add in integrations such as webhooks to trigger certain actions. For example, you can make a call to an external automation engine to automatically provision a new VLAN when it's been added to the Netbox database. You can also create reports and add custom scripts to extend the functionality of Netbox even further. The possibilities are literally endless. So that's a super quick overview of the web interface. And if we go back to the main home page, you can also access the same options via the main body of the page. Plus you have a view of the changelog, which is incredibly useful to have right on the home page. There is a search bar at the top that allows you to search for any object in the Netbox database. And you can either search within all objects or you can be more specific and filter for only the object type that you need. For example, if you wanted to find all of your circuits provided by level three, you could select providers, enter level three, and this will return the level three provider object. And then we can see that there are 13 circuits with level three. And if we click on the link, it will take us to a list of those circuits. As you can see, clicking on any hyperlink will take you to the related objects. For example, if you click on the first circuit returned in the list, it displays all the related information for that circuit. For example, the type of circuit, in this case it's MPLS, and the status is active. And you can see the circuit termination details on the right hand side. Also, right down at the foot of the page are handy links to the official documentation, the REST and GraphQL API documentation, the source code, and the community Slack channel. And lastly, if all of this wasn't enough, you can even switch the UI to dark mode. So I hope this has been a useful introduction to the Netbox user interface, and thanks for watching.